Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Brianna Dignard here. And by the time you watch this video, we will only have about five more days left in my 31 days of Women Scientist Inspired Outfit Initiative. So if you're just joining for this video, the entire month of March, I have been dressing like a women scientist or inspired by a different women scientist every single day of March. And I've been posting real shorts, little short format videos of those outfits, highlighting each of those women scientist accomplishments. It has been a lot of fun, a lot of work and I can't believe that it's almost all over. And on Tuesdays, I've been posting longer format behind the scenes kind of videos of how I made some of the outfits. So today is the last long format behind the scenes outfit. And today's outfit is inspired by Hedy Lamar, Hollywood actress and inventor. And boy oh boy does this outfit have a story. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So uh, some people who may watch this channel may also be crafters like me or have a similar mindset where you have an idea and you're like, yeah, this is a good idea. This is attainable. And then you have another idea. And then you have another idea. And then you have another idea. And as you keep getting more and more ideas, they keep getting less and less attainable. So my original idea for my Hedy Lamar outfit was going to be a black dress, which I already owned, combined with this really cool star headpiece that I was going to make to because I was inspired by her movie outfit from the movie Ziegfeld Girls, uh, which I actually made as a Halloween costume a couple years ago. But I thought that's kind of boring because all of my Tuesday outfits I featured in long format videos have been pretty epic and I've made myself. So then I thought, let's take it a step further. Um, and thus this idea of like, I'm not really sure if it's 60s, I'm not really sure if it's in the 90s, all I know is it is a look and I wanted it was born in my head. And unlike some of my other outfits, this one is definitely a lot more stylized and it's probably not something I will wear outside of this month just cause it's a white dress and I'm a hot mess and I don't like wearing white a lot because I'm really messy. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to make this outfit, show you how I make it and tell you all about the really cool also pretty tragic life of Hedy Lamar. So let's do this thing. <laughs> okay, just for a little bit of sewing background, I will be using this pattern for just a really simple kind of shift dress along with this fabric. I just have leftover from a previous project along with something I'm gonna go find in my fabric stash to line it with because this is see-through and I'm not about that life. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and then turn you over again to voiceover Rihanna. She's getting a lot of action this month <laughs> to tell you more about Hedy Lamar. I have returned from my journey to the floor to cut out this fabric. I don't know, I'm talking like that. <laughs> and now I'm gonna start to pin it and tell you a little bit about Hedy Lamar. It will probably alternate between some footage of me sewing and some footage of me pinning and talking to you. So get excited. Um, Hedy Lamar was born in 1914 in Austria to a rich Jewish family, which gave her a lot of opportunities. Her father really explore, well, explored, encouraged her to explore the world around her, to learn about how things worked. And Hetty really enjoyed taking apart in, like things and trying to put them back together and just figuring out how the mechanisms within them worked. Her mother was a concert pianist and encouraged Hetty to get into the arts as well. So Hetty started acting. She landed several roles in plays, got one one well, pretty controversial movie that I won't mention here, and um, kind of had a little career as an actress in Austria. This led her to be noticed by Fritz Mandel, who was an Austrian munitions dealer who saw Hetty in a play and kind of, as I guess the story goes, like instantly fell in love with her. And in 1933, they got married and it was not really a great marriage. As you can imagine, when somebody sees you in a play and immediately wants to marry you, there's probably not a lot of other things you got going on in common. Um, so as I mentioned, Fritz was a, was a munitions dealer and this is the 30s, 1930s, so leading up to World War II and the Nazi regime in Germany is growing stronger and stronger. And some of the munitions that Fritz Deal were to the Nazis. So in 
pretty shady dealings, you know? So oftentimes Fritz would have like Nazi friends over and be selling them arms or other shady deals and Hetty would be acting as the host. And since according to them, or they didn't see her anything more as a pretty dumb face, a pretty but dumb face, there we go. Um, they would speak openly about all of their dealings and what was going on and Hetty would sit there and listen because she was very, very smart and loved to learn about how things work. So she would sit there and listen and gathered a lot of information about weaponry that would eventually be used in the upcoming World War II. Also, again, the marriage between her and Fritz was not great. It was quite controlling, quite abusive. And so eventually Hetty took the matters into her own hands, dressed up, as a maid in disguise and basically fled for her life in the middle of the night away from Fritz and headed towards London where she let, where she let, where she met Louis uh, B. Meyer, head of one half of MGM Studios and landed a movie deal as she headed over from London to America. So first part is all pinned. I'm gonna get to sewing and I'll keep talking to you via voiceover. Okay, so we left off with Hedy Lamar on a ship over to America to get to Hollywood with a deal with MGM. She became a highly successful actress starring in films such as Algiers, Boomtown, and Samson and Delilah. She became known as the most beautiful woman in film and audiences adored her beautiful face and exotic accent. But beyond the screen, Hedy was hard at work at her true passion inventing. She became acquainted with Howard Hughes, the very eccentric businessman and pilot who set her up with an inventing studio. She helped sketch out a new design for his plane wings, and she also worked on an improved stoplight and a tablet that would dissolve in water to create Coca-Cola. As World War II began in 1939 and geared up in the United States in the early 40s, Hetty then set her mind to military inventions. She knew some things about weaponry thanks to her marriage to Fritz, and after meeting George Antheil, an American composer, they developed a technology called frequency hopping. This was based on the way player pianos, a instrument that George Antheil was very acquainted with, worked. These pianos are almost like a very early pre mechanical precursor to um, like keyboards that can automatically play music, but instead they ran on punch cards that allowed notes to be played at a synchronized and set time. So at the time, radio communication for guiding torpedoes relied on a signal being generated by a transmitter and being received by a receiver. My microphone I use for recording can work the same way with both a transmitter and receiver. So I talk into the transmitter and it sends the signal to a receiver. These, both the transmitter and the receiver must be on the same radio wave frequency for the signal to be communicated. For example, you get your favorite radio station by tuning into its specific radio frequency it operates at, which is actually called the channel name. So like 101.3 or 97.3 are the radio frequencies. If you use a different radio frequency, you'll get a different station. And we're gonna take a quick pause here with a little bit of a project update. Hi, I just wanted to pop back in with a quick little project update as you may have seen it in some of the sewing montage. If editing, we're gonna decide to leave it in there. Um, the white overpiece didn't really work out. It got sewn too tight and it didn't fit around my hips and I got really frustrated with it and I just didn't wanna redo it and I got really stressed out and ah! So I took a couple of deep breaths, scrapped that, and have just decided to like reduce it down. I don't even know if you can tell that I have a dress on to just the black piece that I was gonna use as the lining and just make it black cause <sighs> for my mental health, I'm not, I just can't right now with this sewing project and adding this in, but it's still gonna be a super, super cute outfit. Um, so let's get back into more sewing and more Hedy Lamar. Pretty dirty time, over. All right, voiceover Brianna is back, and when I left off, I was talking about how you can access different radio stations by tuning into different radio frequencies to get the message you want. And the radio communication for guiding torpedoes um, relied on the same thing. You had a signal being generated by a transmitter and being received by a receiver on the same frequency. The issue with radio communication during wartime and is that if your enemies knew what radio frequency to find you at, they could hear all of your messages, or in the case of torpedo guiding technology, they could actually intercept your torpedoes, which is not what you want. 
Frequency hopping aim to beat this by having the radio frequency of the transmitter and receiver change frequently, but always sync together so that the transmitter and receiver would still share the message. As an enemy, you might be able to pick out um, or pick up some of the messages that were being sent if you could tune in, if you picked one frequency to tune into. Um, but unless you change free radio frequencies to the exact same ones as who you're trying to beat um, at the exact same time, you wouldn't be able to hear the whole message. So it'd be basically like if you're rotating the dial in your car radio and tuning into different stations, but as you change to different stations, all of the message is exactly the same. That's what frequency hopping was. And again, the enemy couldn't pick you up because they couldn't possibly match the changes in frequency at the same rate you were going to, or eventually they could, but it was a lot harder to do that than to just have the message being sent on one station continuously. Just a quick pause here of what I'm doing on the screen. It is now bedazzle time for my dress um, to change it from a simple black dress to a beautiful bedazzled dress, I don't know. Um, and I am gluing these sequins on. I actually hand sewed all, all of the sequins for my Halloween costume a few years ago, and it took 20 billion years. And I don't have that kind of time right now. So if I do plan on wearing this dress again in the future, I will go back and sew them on. But for the purposes of this current project and ease of finish, I just decided to glue them, but I think the result was still beautiful. So Hetty and George did receive the patent for it, uh, frequency hop technology, but the United States Navy rejected it and never used it in World War II, and the patent expired before Hetty could get any credit for it. The idea of frequency hopping and some development in this field was rediscovered later by the military and actually used in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, but you know, Hetty Lamar was a woman. She was a beautiful, famous Hollywood actress, and her patent expired. So of course, she did not get any credit for any part of this discovery or invention. As Hedy Lamar aged, she became quite reclusive and isolated before passing away in 2000 at the age of 85. She had begun receiving a little bit of credit for her inventions before she passed, but it wasn't until after she had died that she started receiving the credit due for all of her hard work and amazing inventions, and this included being inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014. So that's just a little bit about Hedy Lamar's life um, and what she was able to accomplish, and... It was kind of sad, but she did a lot of really cool things that we can still remember and appreciate for her for this day. So I'm going to go ahead and finish bedazzling this dress, and then we're going to go see how this outfit turned out. Hello! The dress is all done, and I think it turned out pretty cute. Um, I did lose some sequins in the process of putting it on, and I'll probably lose some more sequins throughout this day, but... Whatever, I lost sequins when I sewed on all my sequins to uh, my Halloween costume. I don't have good luck with sequins. Anyhow, I think it's super cute and super fun. And I had a lot of fun doing my hair and makeup because I love doing space buns. And I just think it's a cool homage to Hedy Lamar. Uh, so Hedy Lamar, as we talked about in this video, had probably what was considered to be by many a very successful life. She was a very successful Hollywood actress considered the most beautiful woman in the world. She, everybody loved her on screen, but what she wanted to be known for most of all was her mind, her inventions, her improved plane wing, her improved stoplight, her frequency hopping. All of those things is what she wished she could have been known for, but didn't get that chance during her lifetime. But we can give her that credit today. And advances made upon frequency hopping led to the development of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So if you are super grateful for your Wi-Fi, you should thank Hedy Lamar for putting those steps in place for us to get it. So, um, also, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. If you want to learn anything more about Hedy Lamar, there's an interesting documentary, I believe it's on Netflix, it's called Bombshell, which goes a lot more into her life throughout like an hour long documentary versus me in a 15 minute long video. Um, so please check that out if you're interested. Today's fun fact we're gonna rate is that Hedy Lamar is said to be one of the inspirations for the look of Disney animation classic Snow White. So please be sure to drop that rating for the fun fact in the comments below. Um, keep waiting for the rest of the month of March, uh, or keep looking for the rest of the month of March. I still have a couple more women scientist outfits to go and more women scientists to highlight. It's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, tell all your friends about me, um, all those good things, and keep it sciencey.